I'm just going to, you know. Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be looking for the chanterelle. The chanterelle is probably one of the most popular wild edibles out there as far as people going out and harvesting them. A couple of reasons why is it's so delicious. And another reason is it's actually fairly easy to identify. Once you get your hands on a chanterelle and you take a look at it um, and you smell it and you open it up, um, you're not going to forget what it looks like and it's going to be easy to go out and find it again. Uh, for me, this is the very first mushroom that I ever learned to identify and it's what kind of got me started down this road of mushroom hunting and exploring. So hopefully we'll be able to find a couple different species today because there are a few. They're all delicious. They're all wonderful. Um, and they're very plentiful, especially here in the Pacific Northwest. So let's get going and take a walk in the woods. They're so cute! One of my favorite things to find are tiny mushrooms. Obviously not what we're looking for, not a chanterelle, but always fun to find other little, other little things out in the woods. And this is the kind of stuff that I like to take photos of, little baby mushrooms. Ooh, coming up everywhere. Not chanterelles, uh, chanterelles are usually yellow gold color and these are obviously not that. Take a look. Oh, beautiful. Look at this. Can you see how pink those gills are? So you can see just how closely packed those gills are and how um, blade-like they are. They're very thin. Chanterelles are not gonna be like that at all. I'll, we'll be able to show you the very distinct difference. Uh, this comes from the Agaricus family. And there are some of these that are very poisonous, will make you puke, and there are some of them that are very delicious. And there are a variety of things you can do in order to tell that. Um, but one distinct thing here about them is this skirt right here on the mushroom. What that is, it's left over from what's called a partial veil. A partial veil covers the gills and kind of protects them when it's young. Um, in fact, I think maybe this one here, since it's young, might still actually have it intact. Nope, it's also open, but you can kind of get the idea there that it was once closed off and that partial veil protects those gills. Eventually the mushroom blooms and then it leaves behind this ring or this skirt. That's a very distinctive feature in a lot of mushrooms and something that is used as key to identify a lot of things. Another thing that's key is if you actually take a look at the base of this mushroom, how it's yellowing right there, just from us picking it up. Uh, some of it's naturally occurring, some of it happens when you break the mushroom or when you scratch it. Any kind of color, things like that are really important to pay attention to. So this one actually still is intact, this little smaller one. You can see how you can't see into the gills quite yet. Um, but I'm gonna be a little bit mean to the mushroom and I'm gonna break it. There we go. You're gonna try and see if it discolors at all. Scratch it a little bit, see if it discolors at all. You can see this one is actually turning a little bit yellow. That's a distinctive feature. Uh, one thing you need to be careful of though is does it stay yellow or does it eventually turn brown? Because some of these will stay yellow, some of them will fade. So um, all these different things are features that you need to pay attention to if it's ever anything you're looking into actually eating. Uh, these ones here make beautiful spore prints so I'm actually gonna take a few with me so maybe we can uh, make some spore prints with them. So if you take a look here, well it's actually just everywhere around me right now, tons of little tiny white mushrooms. And this is very, very common and a lot of times people just walk right over it and don't even notice. So that's why you've got to slow down and just take a look and people ask me all the time, you know, how do you find so many mushrooms? And I think it's just because I'm looking at the ground, I'm focusing. That's all you got to do, look at these. Almost all of these white mushrooms that you see here are probably actually growing out of the pine cones. Even if they look like they're growing out of the ground, if you bury it, uh, they're just buried. The pine cones are growing out of those. Very common. Nice. Let's keep looking for some chanterelles. Check it out. Ooh. Ooh. 
super slimy and slippery on top. Probably a slippery jack. There you go. Take a look at the underside here. Completely different than a lot of other mushrooms because it doesn't have gills. It has this pore surface instead. This pore surface is very common for the bolete family. And then there's a couple of other types of mushrooms that kind of fall under that. But bolete is kind of a general name or a common thing to call mushrooms that have these pores. So this one here, probably just a little slippery jack. Super slimy, super sticky. Uh, sometimes these uh, in particular were stained blue if you push on it or tear the flesh. I think this one here just stains brown though. Nothing too interesting. Um, but kind of fun. Quite a few of them growing here and now my hands feel like they're covered in slime. Pretty cool. Got these yellow, yellow growing here. These are called sulfur tuft because they look like a little tuft of sulfur growing. Often they are growing on dead wood or um, in this case. I wonder if it's growing on something underneath there. You can see how they're kind of grouped together. Try and get underneath. Oh yeah, they're on a big stick under there. I can't quite get them up. Um, let's get one of these larger ones. Pull it up. You can see the underside's got gills there. Ooh, I don't know if you can see, but there are springtails all over those gills. Uh, springtails are also known as like woodland fleas. Uh, don't worry, they're not as bad as the real nasty fleas sometimes, but they love mushrooms. They love to hang out there, crawling in and out. So as you can see, um, You've got some large mushrooms and some smaller mushrooms, and they're the same thing. Uh, it's just this is it mature, more expanded, a little more moisture has been on it. And this here is um, just at a younger stage. But it's really important when you're trying to identify mushrooms is look around what's going on. Because um, sometimes different mushrooms can grow right next to each other, but sometimes they are the same mushroom and you need to collect them in different stages if you're going to identify. Um, because if you were to look and try and identify these and it says it has a, a wavy cap and you look at this version of it, the smaller version, it doesn't have a wavy cap, but it does here. Actually, here's another cool thing. When it comes to mushrooms, the key thing to identifying is looking at the spore color and the spores drop down from the gills. If you can see right here, this dark on this other mushroom is that this mushroom has released some of its spores and it's landed on this other mushroom. So you can tell right now that it's got a dark spore. Um, you can't quite distinguish what kind of brown that is because sometimes different colors of brown are key, but you can tell at least that it does have dark, dark spores. And that's another key in trying to identify. with me. Actually, you know what this is? This is called a scaly chanterelle. Get the scales there. Uh, looks very similar to regular chanterelle, just not as good, but that's all right. So let's at least take a look at some of the features on here. You'll notice it doesn't have that distinct cap and stalk. It's almost all kind of one piece that flutes out to almost a trumpet vase-like shape. See its gills here are more like ridges. Uh, especially in the scaly chanterelle, it's very shallow. Um, so that's a little different than regular mushrooms. It doesn't have true gills. Chanterelles are said to have false gills. That's kind of one way of looking at it. So we've got a, a little patch of those. Definitely past their prime. One thing with mushroom hunting is when you cut off the mushroom on the base, if you look at the base and it's got a hole in it, that means a little wormy has made a meal out of it. So little worms crawl up from the bottom, make their way up, 
and then devour from the inside. So that's one way to check whether or not your mushrooms are uh, worm free. Slice it off, take a peek there. But uh, this is a good sign, it means we're in the right kind of area for finding uh, the true chanterelles that we are looking for. And yeah, at least we found uh, something similar. Let's keep uh, trekking along. I could spend literally like an hour in just like 10 square feet of forest floor and just be finding like interesting little things. I mean, I can't even describe my hand just covering probably about 50 mushrooms right now. Just little tiny mushrooms. And then right over here, look at this. Oh, so cool. <laughs> I'm not even entirely sure. It's a kind of a slime mold, um, but I'm not sure what kind. <laughs> oh, gorgeous. So even though it's a jar, just another resula, kind of breaks that mold. You can see the pink tinted stem. It tasted funny. So this is very um, similar to a resula mushroom. Uh, they're in the same family, except this is uh, considered a uh, lactarius. Kind of the blue staining in there. So this is called a bleeding milk cap. You can kind of tell it's a little older. It's not bleeding as much as I want it to. Oh, it's a chanterelle. It is actually a white chanterelle. That's why I didn't realize it was a chanterelle at first because it doesn't have that golden kind of color, but it is a white species. All right, so here we are. Here is the beautiful chanterelle. Actually, a lot of people prefer the white chanterelle to the gold chanterelle as far as flavor is concerned. Um, me personally, I just like them both. So as you can see here, look at these folds and in these gills. It's not, these gills aren't clearly defined like a lot of those other gilled mushrooms. It's still considered to be a gilled mushroom, but it doesn't have those uh, blade-like uh, radiating gills. Um, also, these gills, you can see how they kind of do a vein-like pattern, how they fork and they split. This is very characteristic of chanterelles. If you find something that uh, it might be a chanterelle, you're not sure, but it has very straight gills and doesn't have these forks and these folds. Probably not. If you're ever questioning it, you always want to toss it out. So you can see it kind of has that vase-like shape, but you can see the top is very smooth. Again, this is the white variation, so this is a lot lighter. Could you show me the top again? And then here is the compared to the scaly chanterelle. So the top has the scales. But they are very similar on the underside as far as those veins are concerned. So if you're ever questioning whether or not it's a chanterelle, another check you can do is check the spore print. The spore print for chanterelles are white. So all you need to do is lay this on a piece of paper, preferably dark colored so you can see the white spores. And let it sit, you know, maybe a bowl over the top of it for, you know, a couple hours. Those spores should drop and you would get a white spore print. So that's another check that you have for that. So if there's one here, there's possibly more. Let's go take a look. Uh, and then also maybe we'll be able to find uh, some lookalikes because the, one of the most important things and the first thing I always do with a new mushroom is you learn what the mushroom looks like, then you learn what the lookalikes look like, so you know how to tell them apart. All right, let's go look. So the number one um, most dangerous mushroom to confuse this one with would be the jack-o'-lantern. With the jack-o'-lantern, it's gonna be much, much thinner flesh, and it's gonna have true gills. Very, very thin radiating gills. That is the number one thing. Also, the jack-o'-lanterns glow in the dark. They are bioluminescent. So, when you get home with your basket of chanterelles, 
go into the closet, shut the door, wait about 10 minutes or so, if you're questioning whether or not you got something that you shouldn't have. And if any of your chanterelles start to glow, glow in the dark, toss them out. Truly, truly though, once you get a hold of your chanterelles, there should be no real reason that you confuse them with a jack-o'-lantern unless you're just being careless. That's why when you go home, you always check your basket. It's holding up this log. It's holding up this thing. Cool. Okay, we're gonna, <laughs> a great patch right there. Okay, at first I saw a couple of them and now I'm just seeing more and more. So, look at this. Mushroom power right there. <laughs> growing up, pushing up that log. So as you can see, this one's so covered in debris. That is one thing that's really awesome about living on the West Coast, is that we get to deal with a lot of debris on our chanterelles. But in exchange for dealing with debris, we don't have to deal with near as many bugs and maggots. If you were to go more to the East Coast, your chanterelles will be pristine, clean, no dirt, debris on them. But you have to deal with the bugs. I would much rather deal with dirt than deal with maggots. Look how beautiful this is. Just those folds. Mm, I love it. So let's, let's pick a few more. There's some in here. So while you're out, you can do a lot of the initial cleaning with these. Um, you know, just maybe cutting off some of those dirtier pieces less dirt that you have on them in your basket, less dirt that's gonna get on the rest of them. It's been a ton of rain this week, so chanterelles can get waterlogged. So sometimes you will find some that maybe aren't as good anymore just because they have so much water in them. You can kind of tell just by giving it a squeeze, you know, what condition it's in. Uh, with that being said, when you take your chanterelles home to cook them, you want to use as little as water as possible when you go to clean them. If you're going to use a lot of water, they'll just soak them up. And then when you go to cook them, they turn totally slimy. You don't want to waste them. You're not going to be able to taste the flavor that way if they're all slimy. I really like, uh, you can buy mushroom brushes, but I really like just using a toothbrush. You get a toothbrush and it can get into those folds and everything. Get these pine needles and stuff off. When you're taking your mushrooms home, it's really good to try um, and just clean them off as soon as you can. Chanterelles can actually keep in the fridge for about a week and be all right. Um, they're great um, stability-wise as far as that's concerned. When you cook them up, um, like I said, try not to use any water when you're cleaning them. Use as little as possible. It's great to do a little bit of dry sauteing before you really get into the cooking of them. Uh, the chanterelle, its flavor is a little bit sweeter, a little bit fruitier for a mushroom, and you don't want to overpower it. So I know a lot of people love to do like a crema chanterelle soup with it. Uh, one of my personal favorite ways is just uh, saute it in a tiny bit of butter towards the end and then just putting it on top of some brown rice. It just, you really taste the flavor of the mushroom that way. Uh, you don't want to waste the flavor of chanterelles because by putting it in a stew or anything like that because it really will lose the flavor and for being such a um, unique flavor of mushroom it is fairly mild so you just want to you know, be careful not to overpower that. All right. Looks like we got dinner. So you know, I know when I'm out in the woods that sometimes I put things in my basket that I just want to look at, research later, or that I find interesting that I want to photograph. Um, so it's always good to go home and sort through your basket for what things are you going to eat and what things are you not going to eat. So you don't want to get to the point where you've already diced things up to cook them and then find out you can't recognize it after that such a good example of those forked ridged veins. I think we got uh, plenty enough. Probably take these home and cook them up and make my brother try them since apparently he's never tried wild mushrooms before. Alright, thanks for coming along with me on a walk in the woods to get some delicious chanterelles.